Come on, Bruni, come on. Welcome back to another video in my channel. Me and Bruno is back in, uh, where are we at, where are we? We're in the Lake District. We're heading up to small water. Now I'm not gonna camp on small water because it's too close. It's gonna, it's gonna take us about, about 15 minutes to get there. So I plotted a route on my OS map. I say plotted. I've got my OS map. Uh, and I think I'm gonna have a little walk up High Street because I've not been that way before. And potentially onto Angleton. One of my favourite places. And if Angleton's pretty quiet, which I don't think it will be because the weather's beautiful. Wait, it's warm. Um, if it's quiet, I'm gonna camp there. If not, I'll just find somewhere else. There's plenty of, there's plenty of space for everyone in there, so this should be a good one, like. Sit, sit. So we've made it a small water, didn't take long, but it is really warm. So I'm proper sweating. Um, there's two lads camping out there behind us. And that's where I camped. I came up here when it was Storm Kathleen, a couple of months ago, doing a wild camp. I just did it on my own, because obviously I had Bruno. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna bring Bruno up in the storm. But uh, I, I picked out that spot because I think it was southwesterly winds. And looking at the map on Google Earth, oh, they've got a drone. Um, looking at a map on Google Earth, it's really sheltered from the cliffs. But by the time I got there, there was two lads camping there. So I was like, oh, never. But I ended up having a bit of crap with the lads and they were both sound. And I ended up pitching up with them. And then they pulled out two bottles of rum. And they ended up getting messy like. So the video for that one isn't on YouTube, unfortunately, but it was a good camp nonetheless. But anyway. Off to the steep bit. Bring you back in a bit. You wouldn't want to sleep in one of them, would you? There's one over there that's collapsed. I wonder if there's someone in. I don't know if you can see, there's a few people behind us camping. This GoPro is crap for zoom. But, uh, ah, look at these, man. That one's collapsed over there. Let's have a look. Any bad that, is it? Someone will have been fast asleep in there when it come down, probably. I'll give them a right little fright. Well, Bruno, you keep tangling them up, man. How are you this way? Good lad. Jesus, man. A couple of lads fly fishing there. I wonder if they're getting out. Big up the land, Shan One over there. Yeah. Not a bad view. I'm blown at my arse like. Do you know what it is? I'm planning, I'm planning a long distance hike in September. Really long. My fitness isn't there yet. Not yet, it's not. I need to up my training big time, like. So, I mean, there's only so much you can do in the gym, on the Stairmaster and that. You need, you need to be out here every time, don't you? I think I might need to start taking my rucksack with some weights into the gym on the Stairmaster. Obviously, I can't get here every weekend. Not with family commitments and stuff, you know, so... Maybe try some runs. Incorporate some running, running into my training as well. So, yeah. But that's the whole point in while I'm out today. It's a training session, really. That's why I've only got eight beers with us. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I've got a couple you have to do, don't you? But the thing is, I'm knackered, I'm blowing out my arse and that, but... Once you stop for a couple of minutes, you feel you, you can go again, you know, so I can recover quite quick. But I think I'm going to walk past a few people and they're blowing out their arse and all, so I think it's just the nature of this hill, it's kind of steep. 
it's worth it for that though, isn't it? Lovely jubbly. I'll tell you what else is doing my head in as well. I've got Bruno on the long line because there's just sheep everywhere. And if he sees a sheep, I mean, I've said before, his recall is pretty good, but not with his prey drive. I, I can't compete with his prey drive, like, and he will, he will lunge for a sheep and chase it. And if the sheep falls over, or he falls over, or I fall over trying to chase, trying to catch him, it's not going to end well. So I've just got him on the big long line, which is annoying because he keeps tangling us up and you've got to keep letting line out and reeling it back in. And it's just another thing to think about, isn't it? I'm just being picky. I think I'm just making excuses. I mean, I love that he's here. I love bringing him, you know what I mean? He's not coming on the, he's not coming on the long distance hike. No way. I wouldn't be able to carry his food. He eats 1.5 kilos of meat every day. And, uh, and this long distance hike is, I'm not going to mention anything yet, but it's long. And I couldn't carry that much food. Raw food and all. After a couple of days, it'd be stinking. Oh, I'll have one last look around. I mean, you have a look, you need to look at my ugly faces, eh? Lushing it. Right, how are them, Brunsky? We're away. It's all right to be here, isn't it? So we've just made it to the top of that steep bit. Um, small water's now out of sight. And I've come across this body of water here, which I, can you see it? I originally thought it was blee water. On my map, it looks like blee water. But I'm on the green path going, it would, I would have went round the right there to the left hand side of it. So I was thinking, eh, but I think it's something me a reservoir, but it's on the other page, so it's not showing up on my map. So I was a bit freaked out for a second there. But in about a kilometre's time, we're going to get to a cairn, and then, and then that's it, on High Street. I think, it's about, I think High Street's about five kilometres away. So I'm going to stop with the cairn. I might have a drink of water, give Bruno a drink of water. And then we'll just crack on. So that cairn behind us is the cairn for the top of Racecourse Hill. <coughs> and it's beautiful up here, like look at the views over there. Well, I know you can see much like. But I keep meaning to stop and tap your bag off and get a drink. I'm so thirsty. But as soon as I stop, it's freezing. And I don't want to put my coat on because I'm sweating red up when I'm walking, you know. Oh, I'm just going to stop, get a quick drink and then crack on. The clags rolled in. There's a 360. Not much views. Now when Met Office, it said that, um, it said by 8 o'clock, it was going to be raining until 3 o'clock. Luckily I haven't been caught out in the rain. But then it's going to be sunny from 7 o'clock onwards. Quarter past six, and it starts mean raining, but it is like wet, obviously with this with this mist what's come in. But uh, it's starting to flatten out now as well. Then we're going to head over over the tops, and it's flat for a while, for a couple of kilometres, I think. So it's all going good. I'm going to have to stop and get a drink. Cause I'm dying for I'm like put a dime for a drink, but I just can't be asked to take my bag off. The good the bad thing about this Osprey rucksack, it hasn't got cup holders. But you get a bottle on, but it's got like uh, space in the back for like one of them bladders. Now with the hose, what comes through? I'm gonna have to get one of them, like. Right, crack on, how are you? And we're back on. Now I need to walk down here and there should be a path that I can pick up and like a turn, according to the map, I take a right angle right. So, Bruno, wait, he's trying to get them sheep, sit. Let's look at this map. Uh, we've just come past there. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, it should just be over this one, this corner here. I'm guessing. I've got a feeling Bruno's going to lunge for one of these sheep and pull me out if I'm not paying attention. Is that an eagle? It's a crow, I think. A big crow. I don't think Bruno would harm a sheep. I think he would just chase it. You know what I mean? He's weird. So I've just walked past a couple. I think they were foreign. They had like a Dutch accent or something. And they asked us if they could stroke Bruno. And I said, yeah, he's friendly. And then he like, uh, 
done like a bark type of thing and lunged and jumped up and I know, like I know because he's my dog that, I, that he was only playing but the two people shit themselves like that's the thing about having like a boisterous dog like him you know there's not for everyone you know what I mean but anyway we're on that path I don't know what that is down there let's have a look at the map it should be oh it's here's water is that here's water where are we at oh yeah. bum 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 Oh, here's, here's water. Oh, nice one. And we're heading up to. Oh, this is, we're on High Street now. 800 meters. We're on High. This must be High Street. Nice one. So we're going to go up here for one. About two kilometers. And we're going to get to the top of the knot, which is 739 meters. Um, and there's a can there. So keep going for two kilometers until we see another can. Yeah. Catch you in a bit. Oh, it's getting a bit nippy now, so I've stopped in there, put my little fleecy on and my gloves because the winds are nipping through over there and it is biting cold. And there's no point in being cold. There's no point. For the sake of just stopping and putting a layer on, on and off, easy done, isn't it? It's a nice little stretch, this, like over the, over a uh, high street. A bit rocky, like you know, that loose rock what you could potentially go over on your ankle. But it's a nice little mooch, eh? Just loads of sheep. And Bruno's like, Whoa. every 10 seconds when a sheep comes our. But it's starting to go up a little bit over there. Apologise for the crap banter, like, there's not much going on on here. Now I know this is going to sound pretty creepy, right? I've just came across some of it. I'd love to have some of it. So look at this, how horrible it is. It is. Oh, Bruno doesn't try and eat it. Now that is horrible, right? But look at the skull, it's got two horns on. Bruno, here, get away from that. Come here. And look at the skull, with the horns on it. If I took that home with me, my wife would literally Divorces like it stinks and all. How it, Bruni? How... So we came over the knot, and I wasn't sure that I had a cairn. There was a cairn at the top of the uh, the top of the knot, and I wasn't sure whether the path was going to take us up or not to the knot. <laughs> it didn't in the end. So we came down to the side, and we're heading up to Satura Crag. I'm nearly there now. Satura Crag, I think it's called. And then I need to mess about with my map in there. Uh, and like fold it a different way so it's on the next page and then I'm going to find out how many how far away we are from Angle Tarn we've been on the go since four o'clock what time is it now it's half seven we've been going for three and a half hours <laughs> but we've been stopping and taking some photos and that you know what I mean so I reckon half an hour of that was just messing about but it's lush here it's come out quite nice and all on it have a look around man Nice, isn't it? Right, how are we then? Bruno's pulling his... I think he's hungry. I normally give him his tea about half oh, four, five o'clock. And he's done some miles today, so he'll be ready for his bait. Got him some raw food, like what he eats. So I, I reckon he's going to demolish it once we get there. There we are, see, this is Situra Crag. And there she is, <laughs> Angleton. Absolutely beautiful. I can see a couple of tents already, but I'll find a place, certainly find a place down there.
not a bad spot. Loads of tents. So there's four over there. There's two behind that hill. And there's one up there. If you can see the peak of it just up there. So there's a fair few people down here, but it's a popular spot. Now, I mean, it's a proper class spot. That's why I keep coming back. But, I mean, I prefer a better pitch, but this is going to have to do. Right, tent up, tea on, crack open a beer before the sun sets. Should get a nice sunset, I reckon, like. We'll see what time is it. Been going four hours. It's a big hike for that for the dog. He's doing well. Bruno. Sit. Drink your tea. Speak. Speak. Can I be, can I not be bothered? Hey, can I be bothered? Bless him. Oh, I'll get the tent up and get you. Well, the digs are up, and I tell you what, this trusty old Euro hike backpacker tent has been a proper legend of a tent for me over the past couple of years. Um, I only got it because it's cheap, and I wasn't bothered about the dog ruining it, you know what I mean? Look at that over there. Beautiful lad, isn't it? But I, I wasn't bothered about uh, the dog ruining it, you know what I mean? I will go out in the boat and stuff. So it's been a mint little tent like. Well, it's the most important time of the day. And that is feeding my boy. I think he knows what's coming because he's, he's twitching. I'll wrap it up in this bin bag in case it's split in my uh, rucksack and I've been wounded if I did. I mean, it's individually wrapped like. So these here, it's all melted now, it's all defrosted. Chicken and apple mince. But he has to have two of them for his tea because he's a ginormous animal. What's he got? This one stinks, this one. Lamb tripe mince. Now this smells like fucking halitosis or something. It's a proper bad smell. Bruno absolutely loves it. And look at that. Bruno, speak. Speak. Go on then, good lad. Go on then. <laughs> it absolutely stinks. All right, these you know. Just the cheap nasty ones from uh, Go Outdoors. But when you're really hungry and you've been hiking, delicious. Washing it down with a nice pina colada IPA. 7%. I've got one of these, and I've got a can of Faith. Shout out here's outdoors for getting us on the, one of the cans of Faith. Beautiful. I've got to buy a new fork. My sister bought us one for camping. And it's a good and an all folio up one. But I left it in my different bag off when I went to Scotland, so shout out Hannah. Bruno is not actually the same. There's a dad over there, this little girl. She must only be about seven years old or something. And she's having the time of her life, like bless her. There's a trout jumping in the water and she's like, Dad, Dad, look. I wonder if it's her first time wild camping. Which is nice to see, you know. Can I wait to tap my little lad? Bring them rather. Another year or two, I'll stop bringing them. It's a big trek. I don't think you'd handle it yet. You'd handle a wild camping, but they're, they're hiking. I'm not too fussed on that, I don't think. That's like two foxes and a chicken voting on what's for dinner. 
I always knew you were a prick, Mankins. Didn't know until now you were all awesome. Watching this movie about uh, ice road truckers or something. What's that guy's called? Liam Neeson. It's kind of rubbish to be fair. So I've just cracked open a can of Faith. Smells absolutely beautiful. Oh, I've just what you want that in it. Bruno's fast asleep. You okay, Bruni? Fast asleep, bless him. Ten past ten. It's starting to get dark now. I'm just going to watch the rest of this movie, finish my beer, and then clam in my sleeping bag and go to sleep. Because that hike what I've done today, I've got it tomorrow as well, all the way back to the car. So, unless anything crazy happens during the night, I'll see you in the morning. Well, that must be, that has to be the worst night's sleep I've ever had in my life. So my airbed's flat, it's got a puncture, and every time I blow it up, it only lasts about half an hour and I'm back on the floor. The floor's kind of hard, like. So I went to bed at about half eleven, and I've been waking up about every half an hour, and it's now four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's starting to get light. So I'm just going to get up, Easy out, lad. I'm gonna get up, get a cupper on. I've got an adventure meal. Oh, look how lush he is, man. He's lush, isn't he? Get an adventure meal into his and then hike back down to the car. And go home and get a good and get a good couple of hours when I get home. Cause I am tired, buddy. Are you tired now, yet? He's been snoring all night. Right, I wouldn't like it up because I need a slash. Go on. Breakfast. <laughs> hey, where's my spoon? Leave that for 10 minutes. Well, I've got a coffee for the rest of that. One of these bad boys. I just stood watching the uh, little trout jumping in the water. 
sometimes hear a noise and you turn around and you can see the ripple in the water. So I've just been standing looking. I've just seen a kind of big one, well, I see a big, about six inches long, jump right out. Seen the whole thing, it was good. I love to have some, a little spinning rod here. No, just a little a lightweight backpack on one. I could stand here all day spinning, catching little trout. I mean, I don't think they're big enough to eat. They only grow a certain size in little tarns like this. Why well, I see little tarns, it's quite a big tarn, this one. But they only grow to a certain size. <laughs> see if you wouldn't eat them. But it's just nice to catch in there. Wild brown trout out of that uh, Lake District tarn. Right, we're away, leave no trace, just flattened grass, nice four hour hike back to the car, it is, what time is it, 10 to 6, let's see if we can get down a bit quicker than four hours, but without rushing because I don't want to snap my ankle, right, how are Bruni, we're away, the weather's coming in like, definitely, it's freezing, I've got my fleece on, my base, my base layer is soaking wet, you know, I was sweating. But that, that wind's coming through, biting cold like. So I've had to put my fleece on as a bit of a windbreaker. I don't want to put me there, uh, my waterproof on. So I'll just be sweating, you know what I mean? But I think it's, it's misty is out. I'm just trying, I'm hoping that I can get the top of this hill here, up onto High Street, without it raining. So at least if it does rain, I can put me, me waterproof on. There's no more incline for a bit, so I'll not be as hot. Oh, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Nice. Street. The clag was blasting in, dead windy, it started raining. So I just had my hood up, hood up, head down, grafting, and I've overshot. Be turning by about three kilometres. I've just ended up with that big Roman. Roman road cairn. I saw, the, I saw the cairn, I thought, I didn't see this yesterday. So I got my map out, got my coordinates up, and I thought, oh, I've overshot it by, hang on, about, about one, two, about two kilometres. So I'm heading back up the hill. But it is what it is. It's, it's dead foggy, man. When the, when the fog comes in, and the rain and the wind, you obviously put your hood up and head down and just bat on. And you can't see your landmarks, what you need to head for. So I need to be a bit more careful, like. <laughs> I mean, it's not a massive, massive mistake. So, heading back up the hill, unfortunately. So I've been trying out some new footwear, you know. Because I've got, obviously, my long distance hike I've got planned. In uh, hiking boots. The ones I've got anyway, and the ones I've had in the past are just heavy and bulky and stiff so i've made the change onto trail shoes trail runners um the lightweight quite flexible decent grip on the bottom and the less cumbersome on your feet now i was worried that i might roll my ankle because obviously with the boots, you've got that support, haven't you, on the ankle? But I've got these uh, Ultra trail shoes, and they've got like a really wide toe box to allow your toes to spread. So when your feet are on the rocks in different different ground, like your foot sort of molds to the ground, and you just don't seem to roll your ankle. You know what I mean? 
So I've been testing them out now and so far so good like really happy with them I'll give you a look at them when I get back to the car So they've got a zero drop which means like no heel uh, the, the, the distance, for, like the, the level from your heel to your forefoot is zero and uh, it's like more natural you know what I mean so although you're not, you don't have to wear trail shoes in so much that when you get a pair of hiking boots you need to take them on a good few hikes don't you you have to endure a few blisters before they soften up and before they get comfortable but with these they're pretty much good to go but what I have found is you need to get used to the zero drop because I'm not used to it and uh, I've been on a, a few uh, walks with Bruno with them on just to try them out you know hang on where we at there's a can and there's a little bit of a junction oh look at that behind us man can you see or not um, and not, not particularly massive hikes four mile pretty much flat ground as well like on a cycle track um, and I noticed me, me, me Achilles tendon was really really sore wait there Bruno was really really sore and that's just getting used to it you know what I mean me heel obviously being low at the floor um, but now I feel used to them class like I see I'll look when I get the car but I think this is what I'm going to wear for my long distance one like you're guaranteed wet feet I mean even in long grass I've just come through some long grass here my feet are absolutely soaking but I'm not bothered about getting wet feet the difference is even with hiking boots you're going to get wet feet but with hiking boots they take days and days and days to dry like when you're out here but these trail runners should dry Couple of day, even a day, a day of nice weather, they'll dry, you know what I mean? So although you're going to get wet feet, they dry really quickly. So there's pros and cons of the both of them, like, you know? But for a long distance, I prefer lightweight and, like, not sporty ways. Sporty, I compared to hiking boots. Less chance of blisters. And here we are, back to small water. There's the car parked down there where I've got my car parked. I don't know if you can see, but them two little, uh, two tents are still there, like, off last night. But what a view. So it'll take us about half an hour to get back down there. There's Hawes Water Reservoir. And that's Hawes Water Reservoir as well. That bit, that bit there, and that, it's all one, it just goes behind the hill, you know. Goes on for about four miles, I think. And that's obviously small water. So, a beautiful place, like. But now I've got to make it all the way down here. Steep. So this is going to be a killer on the knees, I reckon, like. Well, we're back down to the car park. It's been a class one, really enjoyed it. Coming down some of them rocky bits there, quite technical, you know, took ages to get down. Cause you've got to be dead careful with your footing, you know, in case you, all the rocks are quite loose. And if you roll your ankle up there, you're knackered, aren't you? So, took a while to get down, about three and a half hours to get back. But I've really enjoyed it, it's been class. So I've got Bruno some dog food in the car. I'm gonna give him that now, and then just head back. If you wanna have a look at me, yeah, uh, me trail shoes, I'll put a video on the, on the end of this and uh, have a little look and see what you think. But uh, so far, so good for me, like, I definitely think I'm going to stick to them. So, if you've come this far anyway, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. Give us a like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. So, these are uh, Ultra Olympus 5, Vibram Soul. So, you see how it looks like square on the end? Well, a really wide toe box so your toes can spread like that and grip um, alright this is them Vibram sole class grip and the extra wide as well so you've got like, more purchase on the floor I don't know what else to say about them really like they're a zero drop I mean it does look like they've got a heel but they haven't 
that's just extra perfect protection around there and they've got really good heel support I've noticed right around here um, a velcro fastener there and a little hoop on there that's for the, the gaiters you can get some gaiters for them I mean, I've, only, I've, I've probably done about I don't know, 30 mile in them I mean, that's starting to come away there like the little sticker but that's neither note nor some of that but they're going to have a hard life so I'm not expecting and I think they've got a short life as well um, I know that the Hocker ones are only designed to do about 500 miles or something <laughs> so but I'm going to train in these for my long distance hike and then in 10 weeks time by the time my hike comes round if these are just if these are totally hammered because I'm going to go running in them hiking in them and everything um, if, they ham if they're knackered by then I'll just go and get a new pair because they're not massively expensive you know what I mean so I want the grips to be like shit off for me hiking you know what I mean but we'll see I don't know if they last or not I'm not sure time will tell I'll probably do a proper review on them if you if you want um, after I've after I've put a lot more miles in them, you know. We'll see. That's it.